speaker, poet, artist, Angela Drew. So happy to have you here tonight on your Friday night at the library. It's my <laughs> secret mission to get people to come to the library on their weekends. <laughs> so, you know, good luck with that. <laughs> it's successful, it's working. <laughs> My name is Stella Baratlis, and I'm one of the librarians here at Modesto Junior College. I usually work at the West Campus Library, and you can find me there if you're a student. Um, but um, I'm also a poet, and I was the Poet Laureate of the City of Modesto um, from 2016 to 2020. And so I'm always interested in bringing poetry into the library, um, because I think we need more of it. Uh, at Modesto Junior College, but just in the city in general. Um, and I know that there's a lot of different poetry communities, and I'm um, in a specific poetry community that is centered around this nonprofit called the Modesto Stanislaus Poetry Center. And there's lots of other um, pockets of poets around the city, and I'm really interested in meeting you if you're a poet, and if you have your own scene going on, um, I would love to be able to support it um, with the resources that we have at the Poetry Center and hopefully at MJC as well. So um, I wanted to give a shout out to ASMJC and to Campus Life for supporting this event and sponsoring it and making it possible with the food and, and the publici publicity and the marketing. Thank you so much. Um, also wanted to thank all of you for coming here, for the people that signed up for open mic. We had eight people sign up for open mic. The sign up is at the table out there, and if you didn't sign up in advance, uh, do not have no fear. <laughs> you still have an opportunity to do so. We still, we do have time for more people to sign up for open mic. And usually that's when, you know, you hear other people reading first, and then you get a little braver, and you, you realize you can do it too. <laughs> Um, and special thanks to our special guest, Angela Drew, um, who I'm super excited is here for us, and I'll just introduce her in a minute. Um, I just want just a little bit of housekeeping. We do have some refreshments at the table. There's pizza and waters back there. Unfortunately, the pizza has to stay on that side of the world. There's restrooms in the back, middle of the library. Um, you'll see the hallway back there. There's a sign that says restrooms. And the way that the night is going to go is I'm going to, um, Angela's going to perform for us for about 15, 20 minutes. And this is going to be amazing if you haven't seen her perform before. Um, and then we're going to take a little break and then we'll transition to the open mic. And the library technically closes at 8.30, but we might push it a little bit. Come on in, everybody. <laughs> So um, this is this event is a part of um, a, a slate of activities for Black History Month, um, and I wanted to just tell you a little bit about some of the other events that are happening. <coughs> Next week we have Let's Talk the 1619 Project, which is going to be amazing. That's going to be at the Rise Up Center on February 16th at noon. You all are welcome to come to that. And then on February 21st, there is a program called I Work, and we're going to watch three life and professional growth coaches and get inspired by what they have to say about their hard work, their journey of growth, adversities, and success. And that will feature Michael Baldwin, Lakeisha McDonald, and John Griffin. Um, and then on February 22nd, there's going to be kind of a party out on the quad, uh, and then the event is called Do It For The Culture. And we're going to taste good soul food here, African drumming and performances, and so much more. And that is going to be at lunchtime, 11 to 1, on the quad. And if it rains, it'll be in the student center. And then on Friday, all of these activities culminate in the African American Education Conference. And the theme is Emerging Greatness, Stepping Into Who You Are. And that is going to be this uh, Friday the 24th, not this Friday, Friday the 24th from 9 to 3 p.m. Lots of guest speakers and inspiration, and all community members are welcome and encouraged to participate in this program. So if you're interested in that, come and talk to me afterwards. Um, a lot of us are um, involved in the planning of the activities, and we can tell you some more information about this. All right. What else do I need to tell you? Um, I wanted to let you know that if you're an MJC student, you can check out some books. We've got a great display of books for Black History Month with awesome titles that have been compiled by our librarian, Susan Cassidy. 
Um, if you are a community member, you can also check out books if you join the MJC Friends of the Library. And earlier somebody asked if they could just come and hang out in the library, even if they're not a student, and the answer is yes, you are more than welcome to. You can see we've got an amazing space here, and we love it when people use it. Um, all right. Finally, one more announcement, and then I will introduce Angela. Um, the, there is a new poetry program for Stanislaus County, and it is the Stanislaus County Youth Poet Laureate Program, and it, it was just launched. It's our first one we've ever done, and um, the, the submission period opened January 1st, and it ends the end of this month, and I've got some flyers for that on the table here, and also I, I might have put some at the front table. If you're interested in that, please let me know. Ages 15 through 19, um, you have a chance to be famous as a youth poet laureate representing our city, or actually our county. And then the city of Modesto has a poetry contest that just opened up to poets of all, from K through 12 and adults. It's called Poets Corner. And um, you can find that information about that at mostpoetry.org. All right, so all that administrative poetry stuff. I apologize. And now, for the reason why y'all are here, I'm super excited to introduce Angela Drew. Angela is a mother, dancer, author, poet, and self-proclaimed linguistic artist who has loved the rhythm of words for as long as she can remember. Born in Berkeley, California, she began writing at age eight and has always understood that words have the power to soothe, stir, or solidify connections. Thus, her lifelong love affair with storytelling began. Angela's the winner and first place slam champion of Modesto's 2021 Ill List Poetry Slam. And I don't know if you've ever been to that, but that sells out every year. In It happens in December. It sells out in August, and every seat at the State Theater is, um, is spoken for. So keep your eye out for that. Um, but she won that Invitational Poetry Slam, and she was competing against people from all over the nation. And she is our Modesto champion. She's performed at various venues throughout Northern California, including the Gallo Center for the Arts in a Sankofa community theater production of The Journey, The African American Experience, the Hildegard Festival of Women in the Arts, and Expose Yourself to Art, a Miss Lynn Gallery Central California Art Association endeavor, just to name a few. She's the author of Elderberry Wine, a children's book written in poetic verse, and you can see it on the table right here at the side wall. Um, and she has some available for purchase, and she would be, be happy to sign them as well. Um, this book, Elderberry Wine, celebrates the beauty and majesty of our elders and the richness they bring by simply being a part of our lives. To learn more about Angela and her word artistry, you can visit her on Instagram at SheSpitsFire, with little underscores between the words. Um, and she's on Facebook at Angela Drew. And she, her website is linguisticartistry.com. So everybody, please put it together for Angela Drew. Welcome, Angela. So it's so funny that, um, so as we come in, we're going to the back, and now not, we're not sitting up, we're pulling the chairs back to the back. <laughs> so I'm going to actually like move, I'm going to move a little bit closer to you guys, because I like to be a little bit cozy, so I'm going to move like right here. Okay. Sorry, camera. It's all <laughs> Sound button on the side. You can turn it up. Can you hear me? Oh, turn it up. Sir. Yeah. Can you help? Is that better? Like that? Like that? All right. That will work. Hmm. Up jump the boogie. Let me see you swerve. 
Spoken word goes in the circle, hip hop to spoken word. Relativity is not imaginary, cause I was feeling this for hundred years before me. Listen to the inflections and inner reflections of my poetry. Grab on, latch on, hold on, and if you keep up then you can go with me. See, life, it moves in circles. 360 degrees is how it's playing. From jazz, fellow and blues, spoken word to hip hop, it's all about what we be saying. Do you recognize our rhythms? Can you celebrate our rhymes? Spoken word, it rumbles to the beat like life, and it's all about keeping time. From the earlier days in West Africa, where my forefathers entertained villages, where they spoke of life lessons, the beauty of sun. Recollections conjure up soul-filled images. On the slave days, in fact, cotton sacks on their backs, they would check while they work sounding something like that. It's amazing to see life's pain and beauty can they so easily in a line of poetry. Dang. Wait, wait. Let me return to my point. Back to the days of juke joints where ladies croon the blues like, Sister, you've been on my mind. And folks felt anointed. I'm moving on through from the sadness of blues to the Harlem jazz clubs where the trumpet rang true. It was rhythm beat bop, vocal rhythm ski bop, like a rhythm beat bop, skilly bop bop, shoe up, improv. Freestyle, same thing, same style, never the same twice. Real spit, real nice, on through the 60s. Nikki Giovanni, next to news wrote the blues and Baraka spoke free. It was freedom they craved, so so deep in the game. When black like a flag, they knew nothing about shame. Gil Scott Heron, Audrey Lord was right on. In Tozaki, Shange made me feel like the bomb. They stepped to the mic. 79 was just right. Spoken word plus a beat equals rapper's delight. <laughs> it was hip hop, one love, hip hop. It was hip hop. Hop, a hip to the hip of the hip, hip, a hop, and you don't stop a rocking. Yes, it was born out of love, out of necessity. Yes, it went in the living circle, now it's back to me. Roxanne Chante to MC Light to Moni Love, you see. To Queen Latifah to Debrat and on to Flowetry. And I have merely scratched the surface, but you get my drift. Drop on my knees, say the creator that bestowed these gifts. Spoken word is a movement. Hip hop is a movement. Keep the circle going, perpetual motion. Hip hop coming through. Rebirth anew in the bosom of the true spoken word. Word, word, check it. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> thank y'all, thank y'all. So I, re I really like to kick things off with that poem um, because it really focuses on um, the true spirit and the true art of oral history. Our, our history as African Americans have been, has been passed down primarily in the oral tradition, right? When we go back to the griots in Africa, when we go back to how we tell our stories, our stories are invaluable currency. We must continue to tell them. We must continue to speak them. We must continue to write them. We must continue to share them. So um, I like to start off with that poem to kind of set the temperature of my set. And so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the next poem I'm going to do it's a poem that I wrote when I was pregnant with my youngest son. Um, and I was struggling with the idea or concept of feeling a certain sense of worry, fear, stress, anxiety about when I thought that I was pregnant with a, a boy. And bringing in this to this land, to this, this here America, um, a young boy that will fight well a young black boy who will grow into a young to a black man in a nation that may not always love him back and so i had to think about how 
how to approach it, how it was strategic and intentional, and um, it's going to take a whole lot of love to, to heal this planet, y'all. And not just loving each other, but ultimately loving ourselves. Uh, so this um, piece is called The Birth of a Black Man. Inherent life, it flows on like sound. Bluesy tune from the womb of a woman brown. His eyes, his ears for nine long months it seems. His bearer of breath, his translator of dreams. But my heart, it lay heavy in anticipation of birth, a prophecy of things to be as he comes forth to earth. With my head tilted right, a glimmer of sunrise I caught, and my mind dared to wonder, is there love at first thought? For the moment I knew was the moment I loved and rubbed the roundness of my belly, singing to him softly in sweet songs of Solomon and old Negro spirituals like, pass me not, oh Jesus, say, then I felt him as his whisper sang back to me in bright melancholy blue and serenaded me sweetly with symbolic soliloquies of stories given to him by the ancestors to bring to me and fill me up and give me the strength to maintain as the mother of a warrior. And after he had given me the, the, the rhythm of a foot drum melody, he turned and he tossed and he shouted to me in tones of Matt Turner and crescendos of Christmas and monochromatic melodies of Marcus and Malcolm and Margaret and telepathically asked me, Mommy, what's going on? And I wept for his old soul that knew too much, had already seen too much, and wondered how I would keep him from the pain of what was to come. How would I explain to him that those weapons formed against him had not only prospered, but had gotten rich off of his great, great, great grandfather's suffering? Quietly, I drank his heartache and I fed him joy and I prayed for resilience. My wound brought forth this black boy. Dare I smiled and I laughed and I wrapped himself in the warm hues of autumn and filled every inch of him with the newness of spring and gave to him the gift of eternal happiness so that when he came to me, came to be, came here to walk among men, he would already possess more smiles than the world could take away and more respect for himself than the world can diminish and more confidence in his abilities than ignorance can tear down and more love for mankind than hate can rescind. Then I close my eyes, smile sweetly and pushed and I pushed and I pushed and allowed my son's new life to begin. Thank you. Um, fun fact about that poem, so my youngest son is now 21, and he is a junior at Morehouse College in Atlanta. Um, so he actually got lines from that poem tattooed across his chest and um, yeah so it's it was pretty full a full circle moment and a proud mama moment so yeah um, I'm gonna go into this next poem um, I wrote this as we kind of all settled in um, during the pandemic right and we had all these things that were happening um, socially um, and just kind of the whole protest movement and it's funny how it took that time for us to stop. Um, we had to kind of disengage to pay attention. Um, and 
I'm going to leave it at that. But this poem is entitled um, Stranger Things. <clears throat> That fruit it be strange. As tears drop on watch bands of armed hands who stole land of our men and women, I scream. No one listens. Neck twisted, eyes misted, he called for his mother, beseeching all others as knee crushed his windpipe, white hate taking black life, but wait. Yo, we matter, right? <laughs> right. That fruit it be strange as blood splatters on seatbelts of black man who tells 12 I have license to carry but no license to live in this racist precarious nest in distress. Girlfriend watches as trigger meets finger meets fear. Blue light blasting five shots to the body. No reaching, no reaching, no he was not reaching. Another black casket constructed from terror. They fear us, they fear us, yo. Why do they fear us so? That fruit it be strange and yet age does not matter as boys feet pitter patters on park playground with toy gun. Not Tom, but Tamir. He's no older than 12, path made clear by his color. In other words, little black boys, no they cannot be children. Only threats, your white eyes project lies, only see them as threats to eliminate hate destroys everything in your wake. How much more can we take? How much more will we take? Yo, my heart, it can't take much more, no. That fruit, it be strange as my sister lies sleeping, though not more at deceiving her senses. That sense that she was murdered between her sheets, Brianna. Her name repeat, Brianna. Her name repeat, not just a hashtag, a tweet. Justice, no peace till there's justice, no peace. Only one time in danger met. Who even knew what that fucking meant? Property over human life. They don't see us as humans, why? Crimes against humanity, crimes against black humans. We are tired, been tired of all these ghosts haunting us while they hunt us like prey, while we pray and march, pray and march, pray and march. Y'all, I can't march no more. Hmm. Action over hashtags, my new rally cry, time to organize, strategize, improvise, see through the lies, justice ain't blind. We see time after time, but does an eye for an eye really leave us all blind? Boiling point, because I'd rather go out queen and slim style, but they too will leave on this tree of strange fruit. Bitter berries drip blood wide as oceans. I'm drowning in this blatant, three fifthified visual representation of my folks being slaughtered. That's the birth of this nation. All this rage in my heart, eyelids swollen with tears. Tell my seeds, lift your chin. We won't live here in fear. No more asking, no more begging for scraps at their table. Build our own, save our own, cut the cord, cut the cable. When they see us, yo, they'll see us. It's not if we win. Move in silence, but move as this poem comes to an end. But y'all better believe that this ain't the end. Oh, God. No. Thank you. favorite poem. I call it a love letter to my sisters. Um, in honor of Black History Month, no, not really, because this was written before Black History Month, and it's really Black History 365, say, say. All right, so, but this is a love letter to my sisters. I love y'all, real talk. It's called BWE, The Black Woman Experience. <clears throat> Sometimes I feel like a motherfucking chameleon. Flexing and flowing and morphing and changing into the depiction of me that makes you comfortable. I show up like camouflage, beige and brown and green and gray. Any other subdued shade but black. For my blackness is your 
Right. They say telling us, girl, don't be too aggressive or assertive, too loud or too proud, keep that neck and head off civil, no side eye allowed. Don't be too feisty, too spicy, too forward, too bold. Don't defend, just concede. Black girl, do as you're told. Don't rock the boat sideways, maintain status quo. <laughs> do your job and for others, but keep that deep on the low. Braids on you, yeah, that's ghetto. But on others, exotic. Mm. Better wig it or weave it. Don't you throw it or lock it. Mm. You should smile more. No, really. Watch your words, check your tone. Keep that code switch on lock when you answer the phone. Don't be too strong or too loose. Emasculating Jezebel. Talk it up a little bit, sis. They don't know you mean well. Girl, you damned if you do and damned if you don't. Judge when you will and question when you won't. Disrespected and neglected. And this much is true. Black girl, when you go missing, no one's checking for you. Mm -hmm. Microaggressions on a daily. Girl, you strong, suck it up. That black skin's pretty thick, right? It shouldn't bother you much. It shouldn't bother you, right? Wait, it shouldn't bother me, right? Hey yo, but check this out. Quite frankly, being a black woman in America is exhausting. And I'm not angry, <laughs> I'm tired. Tired of being reduced to a monolithic caricature of everything that I am and everything my ancestors have survived. I'm tired of being told that my history began with slavery when I know that I'm the descendant of queens and kings. I'm tired of the masses buying my features, my lips, my skin, my ass, and not buying into me and the wealth of all that I am. I'm tired of explaining to our daughters, my daughter, why she gets dress coded for the same length of shorts that Becky wears because they try to police and control our bodies because they can't control themselves. And I'm tired of being labeled angry when I stand up for myself, when I stand up for what I believe in, when I fight for truth and righteousness and justice and equality and equity, yet I am labeled angry while my peers are labeled passionate. I'm tired of being told that black women do not get along when we were, we are the movers of the movement and when we come together in sisterhood, magical moments happen and I am so tired of worrying and wondering when my sons and my husband leave our home for the day, what harshness and hatefulness they will encounter from people who do not recognize their humanity, but instead fear their very existence. So I say a daily prayer, speaking sacred words to cover them in love and protection to ensure that they make it home safely to me at the end of the day. And I am so exhausted from being expected to carry the world on my back like a mule carrying cargo. But yes, I am strong, but I too have weak moments. I too am vulnerable. I feel, I love, I worry, I hope. Look at me, see me, acknowledge me. I have breakdowns and I have breakthroughs, but I refuse to be broken. I will no longer fold myself into four right angles, tucking my layers and complexities inside of your neat little boxes, for I am round and robust with curves in all the right places and I will rise.